How's it going guys, Mr. Boss for the win here, and I want to talk about some new console news, specifically some info about the Xbox One. Now over the past week there has been a lot of information that has come out about the Xbox One, some bad news and some good news, so I thought I'd cover both of them. Anyways, I guess let's start with the bad news. Alright, so one that kind of irks me a little bit is the Xbox One won't support external storage on day one, and that's kind of bothersome to me. Now, it's not that big of a deal that the console comes with a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Honestly, I wish it was a ton more. My computer has has two terabytes worth of storage. I really would have loved a terabyte, but 500 gigabytes is still a lot. However, the problem with that is I store a lot of my like DLCs and extra little trickets and knickknacks uh, that I don't want on my hard drive on a USB, on an external hard drive. And it looks like Xbox One will not be supporting that on launch day. So all the Call of Duty DLCs, I have like a 100 gigabyte DLC flash drive. That's where I put all of my DLC on because I like to have the option to take it off. And that is a little bit frustrating that knowing from day one, I won't be able to do that. So that's the first bit of bad news. The second one is preloading digital downloads on Xbox. Xbox One won't be available at launch either. So I guess you could consider this good and bad because there's still glitches being worked out. Uh, if you do know, Grand Theft Auto V, the ending, the soundtrack, some details were leaked on the Sony PlayStation 3 pre-digital download marketplace because there were some little bugs and minute fixes that didn't work so well. But the overall feature of pre-downloading games is awesome, meaning you can download a game almost like a hundred percent and then as soon as the game comes out you don't have to wait on download times you can just play it and I think that feature is awesome because it cuts down on waiting times cuts down on you know BS downloading times especially for games like Grand Theft Auto that are like 60 something gigabytes you have to download it's a crazy it's like a giant cache of computer programs uh, that is going to be Grand Theft Auto 5 so uh, that's actually really cool that they're doing that, but it's sad to see that that, won't, that feature won't be available on launch day because there's a lot of games I would like to do that for, like Watch Dogs uh, and some other Xbox One games that I know that uh, are going to be really cool, but I won't be able to download them digitally. So let's talk about some uh, news that actually did excite me. Now the first one was you're going to be able to connect eight Xbox One controllers uh, at a time. Now for the longest time, I mean going back like five generations, we've been stuck with like four controllers only. I mean the N64 the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, the Xbox 360, PS3. It could only do four controllers. I don't know like what was set on the four controller idea, but now we can do eight controllers. So uh, not that I have many friends over to come play on my Xbox. Most of my friends have their own Xbox right now. But if you are in the mood and you do have a big enough TV, I'm talking like 90 inches, it would be cool to put, you know, eight you know controllers on one screen so if that's what you're looking for that kind of ultimate Marty Mario Party experience the Xbox one is going to allow you to connect eight controllers uh, at a time on one console so that is pretty cool as well now some other good news the Xbox one console that you mean the release date console that you're gonna be getting gets a 150 megahertz boost so that's actually really key because it brings it a little bit closer to the PlayStation 4 which currently right now is still the stronger console without a doubt but this does bring it to more of a competitive level uh, than it was in the past so 150 hertz megahertz bonus uh, that is going to be added to the console from day one that's pretty cool as well now the big bit of information that has come out today is that the official release date for xbox one is going to be november 22nd and there's two key things about that the key thing about the November 22nd date is it comes after the PlayStation 4 release in North America, which is November 15th, approximately one week after. But it, but it comes out a week earlier than the global release of the PlayStation 4. So if you live in America, you can get the PlayStation 4 a week before you can get the Xbox One. But if you're anywhere outside of America, you can get the Xbox One a week before the PlayStation 4. So those are the cool, cool key dates, I guess you could say. I don't really know what to think. Uh, there's going to be complainers for each one saying, oh, they, they did it after the PlayStation 4, you know, that's why would they do that? But if they made it before the PlayStation 4, everyone would have said, oh, they're rushing it. What are they doing? So I don't really see a win-win here. It's a cool date near Thanksgiving, so I don't really mind. But what I want to hear from you guys is what do you think about the new console news? Do you like the moves that Microsoft are making or do you think they're going in the wrong direction and should just can the project all together? Or, or what do you guys think? I really want to hear from you guys. So what do you think of rele the release date and what do you think of the more recent changes that have happened to Xbox One? Anyways, guys, take care. Thanks for watching this video. Like I said, like, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.